Okay, it's about 4.02 on Thursday, November 12th, 2020. We have a quorum, so I'll call this library board meeting to order. Uh, the quorum is in the form of some people attending here in the chambers, in the council chambers, and people online. And that's a good segue into the first item on the agenda, which is the uh, public notice of being able to conduct the meeting by teleconference due to the uh, coronavirus. So when we will be taking a vote, we will be doing the roll call method where April will call out the names and then you state your, your vote at that time. All right, so moving on then to the second item, the approval of the agenda, which is printed and, or online before you. Uh, there are no changes, so I will make a motion to approve the agenda as shown. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Any corrections and no additions, right? Nope. So all in favor of approving the agenda as shown, say aye. Aye. Well, we gotta aye. Now we gotta go through we gotta go through the roll call. <laughs> Those of you on the phone, <laughs> when you say your um, second or motion, could you please also say your name? All right, we'll yes. go through the agenda roll call. Margaret Blomberg. Aye. Vince Burgo. Aye. Sue Kimmel. Aye. Gerilyn Kelberg. Aye. Dave Martinka. Aye. Bernice Schmitz. Aye. Carl Zeidler. Aye. Awesome, you guys did a great job. It was kind of like a trial run. All right. Now we'll go into the approval of the minutes from the October 8th, 2020 Library Board meeting. And I have been surprisingly informed that there was a couple errors actually in the mirrors, in the minutes or om omissions. One of them was on the uh, approval of the minutes from last month. Uh, the number of eyes was not recorded correctly. It's, it was shown as zero in there and it should have been eight. So that will be corrected. Uh, and then secondarily, uh, Margaret was not listed at all in there for not being here, which she wasn't, but also usually we list who's absent. So, I know, see what happens when you don't show up. I know, she's so sad. <laughs> so, anyways, those are the two corrections that w I was made aware of. Um, and then we did, um, I'm sorry, I misspell um, Gabby Budensky's name. So we'll fix that. Respect. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So, and I'm not sure how those corrections are going to be taken care of, if the meeting minutes will actually be updated mm -hmm. or they'll just be like a retraction noted in this month's meeting minutes to correct those. So, but in some form or fashion, they will be uh, updated. Mm -hmm. So, based on that, um, I will make a motion to approve the October 8th, 2020 Library Board meeting minutes with those corrections noted. All right, April? I'll second. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I need a second. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. <laughs> Keeping me on track. All right, now April. All right, Margaret? Aye. Vince? Aye. Sue? Aye. Gerilyn? Aye. Dave? Aye. Bernice? Did you say Bernice? Yes. Uh, aye. And Carl. Aye. All right. So that's passed. Motion passed for that approval of the minutes. Now we'll move on to <coughs> the financial report. And we'll start off with the October 2020 financial report and summary. But then also um, Paulina will discuss the second item in there, the CARES funds which is, uh, <coughs> um, well, she'll get into that. So take it away. Okay. Um, so we are 83.88% through 2020, and our budget is approximately 77.95% expended. Um, I'm very excited to say that this is the first month since I've been here that we're actually below where we should be right now. Usually one of our line items is a little bit overspent, so I'm very excited. Um, however, our insurance group dental is at... Um, 
920, and that was because um, I know it's been mentioned at previous meetings, the monthly amount was inputted in the budget for the year instead of the total for the year. So that's going to be about 1700 um, for us. And um, like Vince mentioned, we were um, fortunate to have some um, CARES funding come to the library department um, from funds that um, the city will be receiving. And so um, that's more informative of what we have um, spent um, with that funding that was approved by um, the city manager and um, finance director. And that includes, um, we purchased a zebra printer as well as additional um, scanners, which is the star, uh, the barcode readers um, to um, socially distance and t for um, each um, desk to have um, a barcode reader in the staff room. We also the micro um, star microonics um, are our receipt printers that patrons receive. Um, the zebra printer actually is um, our part of our processing when we um, process books. Um, some overdrive ebook money, um, as well as a PC for a self check and a monitor for a self check machine that we um, hope to um, add to the library soon, as well as the um, self check license for Sierra um, through Triple I. So the self check license is um, Sierra is our um, integrative library system that we use on our back end to check items out, and that's um, just the interface for a patron to do them to um oops excuse me to um check out items themselves so it'll look a little bit different on a patron's end um so our the it department has been working very diligently um to help us set that up right now i know the pcs have arrived but um they just haven't been installed yet um so that um we were able to um spend uh four thousand seven hundred and forty five dollars and ninety four cents for those items and those are um, we'll be taking out of um, we have a special cares um, fund that the finance director set up so that doesn't come out of our 211 or 212 funds so does that show up anywhere in the budget then or is there a line item in there for that then or is that in the city budget that's in the city budget that it won't come out of um, that's not in any of our um, materials okay so we didn't mm -hmm. actually spend any money on that then mm -hmm. we got basically cares money yes to, for to that, to that. Mm -hmm. okay and they mm -hmm. the uh requirement is that it has to be spent on items that uh were would be as a result of the coronavirus yes or um unanticipated um i the items that were not budgeted for the year right mm -hmm. And then would that also, would you also be able to include like the extra disinfectants and the wipes and all that other stuff that we're having to spend? I believe some of um, the city funds went towards that. I'm not exactly sure. It would based, was based on department um, request, but for the most part we've been, um, our cleaning supplies, so we've been coding to a special COVID-19 project line. Okay. So it's the funding will come back through um, FEMA funds. Okay. Oh, okay. So yeah, mm -hmm. so that's a separate. Mm -hmm. And then on the back Vince, I do. Go ahead, Dave. Vince, Vince, I have one. I have one question on that. On that self check license for Sierra through, I don't know what does it say. Three. Uh, it's it stands for a triple I. It's um innovative interfaces. Okay, it says for a thousand fifty. How long does that last? That's for a year. It is for a year. Okay. Yeah. And then back on the insurance group dental rate, you know, you'd indicated that, uh, um, you know, that's at showing at a mm -hmm. whopping 920% yes. over budget, but that's because the uh, the monthly amount was input instead of the annual amount. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so if we if we did the conversion, are we still okay on that? Then I mean, we, did we factor in enough for yes. recovering that? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, any other questions concerning the budget or the uh, CARES? Yes, I, I would like for uh, my own edification and perhaps for our audience and the historical record, could, if you, are you able to tell us a little bit about what CARES funding, what that means? What the, is that an acronym and what it stands for? If you're not able to right now, maybe you could you know, have uh, Nicole or somebody have a, like a brief paragraph on our next agenda. 
Sure, I can do that, yeah. So we can get a sense of what that is mm -hmm. and uh, why we're getting it. The okay. other question is that Zebra printer, is that a brand name or is that a specialty printer? That's a brand name. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, any other? It's the printer that we use to print the spine labels that go on the books. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, so it's the, it prints barcodes and stuff, right? No, it, it prints the spine labels on... Um, Oh, board. that thing. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. it's yeah. it's okay. I thought it was the, the the thing you scan then for when they when you check out a book. No, we get those through minute tax at oh. the state level. Okay, thanks for clarifying clarifying that. All right, any any other questions on the financial report? All right, hearing none, then we'll move on to the librarians' report. We'll start off with the library department activities report and statistics. Okay. Paulina. Um. So so an architect and board member with um, uh, an architectural firm out of St. Paul visited and virtually toured um, the library as part of their tour day. They were focusing on buildings from the 1970s. Um, so they were here in October. Um, so that was really interesting to have them um, talk about different, um, um, the, just the, um, preservation of um, the modern architecture and things like that in Minnesota. So we were a part of their um, tour that day. Um, myself and a reference librarian um, held a library card sign up month, uh, sign up day at a Cathedral's High School as part of their banned book week celebration on October 1st. Um, the Optimist Club and Lions Club generously donated monies for children's materials, movie licensing, and large print books um, in October. And um, something I did not um, include in here, um, I just found out that um, the library, the Friends of the Library, we um, were able to um, uh, submit a grant um, uh, through Walmart and for the purchase of a 3D printer and that was um, approved. So that will more than likely be an agenda item next month or um, as soon as the friends receive um, the monies for that. So is that going to fall under uh, Leroy's mm -hmm. auspices and learn a little toy for him? Um, but you've hopefully it'll be <laughs> some pro team programming and adult programming we could do, yeah. Well, Congratulations and thanks to those involved in mm -hmm. uh, submitting uh, the grant application. That's, mm -hmm. I think, going to be a great asset. So uh, we're excited. I believe it's um, for $3,000, and that obviously includes the uh, machine and the filament um, and the software for that. Okay. Um, and we are looking into um, how the software that we need for it will work, whether or not we can get multiple licenses for several computers or not, so we can work it off a laptop or not. Um, so we're still investigating some of that. Okay. Um, and then I can go on. Um, enclosed is um, some of our upcoming programming uh, this month. And as of right now, we may, we have um, the history and um, mystery book groups meeting in person. Um, we may go virtual. Um, we're still taking it day by day, so we'll see how that goes. Um, and um, I can go on. Uh, Brown, our, the Brown County Library Board met on a Monday night, and um, we will be each library will be s receiving a check for eight thousand three hundred and fifty in the coming weeks. We also we've had um, vacancies on the. Um, District 2 and District 5, and um, we have volunteers who are willing to serve on the board for those um, districts, and that will be going to the Brown County um, commissioners next week for approval. Okay. So that pretty much covers all three items under the librarian's mm -hmm. report then? Yeah. Any uh, questions? Carl, you got anything more to add? Yes. On the, um, go ahead. <laughs> I do have a question, Paulina. This is Gerilyn. I'd uh, like to back up to the tour of the library that was oh. taken by the group um, in, involved with modern architecture. Had they done research on the library themselves? Yes, they and did. And shared yeah. that with you, or they did, okay? Yeah, but they did. Um, so before they came in, they did um, some research at um, 
th they had um, gone to St. Paul to take a look at some of our, I think, uh, blueprints that were there. Um, but they also, we oh. um, the building official provided me with, with some. So they were very excited just to take a look at how um, it was designed. They were mostly focused on the newer addition that was built in the um, 70s. Um, we anticipated oh. going upstairs um, to the original building, but we did not. But yeah, they seem to know okay. quite a bit, so it was very interesting. Uh, thank you. All right, any more questions, or issues? All right, we'll move on then into the action items. We got quite a few of them this month. Uh, we'll start off with the first one, Resolution 2020-20, approving, updating of the meeting room policy. This is the second reading and adoption. We had the first reading last month. Um, the meeting room policy was last amended in April 2014. The policy change changes include a contract format to be read and signed by the lessee of the meeting space. And then also included were two copies of the policy. One is the meeting space rental agreement and the other one is the meeting space rental agreement and notice of responsibility during COVID-19. These changes are recommended by the library director and have been reviewed by the city attorney. And I'm going to waive reading on both of those. They're pretty lengthy, but uh, having them been out for a month on the website and uh, having the board members had a chance to, to read through them. Um, hopefully everyone is familiar with what's contained in them. So I will entertain a motion then to uh, approve the update of the meeting room policy. So move. This is Gerilyn, I so move. Awesome. Okay, I have a motion. Do we have a second? I will second. This is Sue. I have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion, questions, concerns, issues? The only question I would have uh, in reading through those, you have uh, the uh, library then takes, does have the right to a group coming in that they don't think they want to use uh, the meeting room, they can deny it, correct? Mm. Yeah. Yes. So, not, yeah, okay. Under that was the question. Under certain conditions. Right. I'd like Carl said, under certain conditions, yes. But for the most part, um, it's open. It's usually based on availability. For the most part, we are only... Um, the meeting room is only available while the library is open. And, uh, uh, and certain programming um, take precedence as does um, NUCAT usually has a schedule that we coordinate with and they have certain times where they film. Mm -hmm. So now have you had any requests for meetings uh during these times right now um or? we had a, a couple um and i reached and it was for the later months after potentially um this um uh meeting room policy would have been approved um however both um programs that were going to be um in the meeting room have decided to go on zoom so okay. they'll be a virtual and they kind of had talked about that at the beginning that that was a possibility and those are city programs through the city. And there were, uh, we had mentioned that the city gets priority the right. when mm -hmm. for meeting room use. Okay. As well, yeah. All right, any other questions or concerns? All right, then we'll, we'll start the roll for the voting. Margaret? Aye. Vince? Aye. Sue? Aye. Geraldine? Aye. Dave? Aye. Bernice? Aye. Carl? Aye. All right. Motion passed then. 
Next, we'll move on to Resolution 2020-21, accepting the Minnesota Historical and Cultural Heritage Grant or program. In October 2020, the library was awarded an Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund Legacy Grant in the amount of $400 for Joe Kimball's Secret of the Congdon Mansion program. Joe Kimball will be at the library on Tuesday, January 12, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. talking about the infamous Condon murders, which he covered as a rookie reporter since the day the bodies were discovered in 1977. He is the author of the best-selling Secrets of the Congdon Mansion, a first-hand account of Minnesota's most infamous murder case. In his library speeches, Joe talks about covering the story from start to finish as a reporter for the Star Tribune and gives inside details of the victims, investigators, and perpetrators to bring the tale to life and gain insight into this piece of Minnesota history. So I will entertain a motion to accept the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund Legacy Grant. I'll move. Acceptance of the grant. Second. All second. Okay, we have a motion and a couple seconds. <laughs> uh, any discussion or questions? Yeah, the question that I would have, if the COVID is still rampant at that point, uh, it will be would virtual. Would we try to get in to come in at, yeah, come in uh, at a later date then? No, it'll actually be on the same day, just virtually. And he's aware of that. We've discussed that with him. So it'll either be on that date in person or that date in virtually, depending on what's going on. And we'll more than likely have um, notice of that a couple weeks out, hopefully. So it'll be done virtually. You won't have it come in like in again six months or something. Um, more than likely not, unless, um, not with, no. <laughs> okay. All right. So I have a motion and a second. And then so I'll, we'll, we'll do the roll call for, for voting on, the, uh, on this resolution. Margaret? Aye. Vince? Aye. Sue? Aye. Geraldine? Aye. Dave? Aye. Bernice? Aye. Carl? Aye. All right, motion passed. Now we'll move on to resolution 2020-22, accepting the May 2nd to November 4th, 2020 donations and memorials. The attached list describes donations received by the library from May 2nd to November 4th, 2020. This includes general donations and memorials. The Library Board of the New Orleans Public Library accepts these donations with gratitude to the donors. Approve it and then, and then talks about if it was approved or not. So and then the list shows the, uh, it's quite a, quite a lengthy list. Most of the stuff is in the form of cash, um, but there are some items that were donated. And the total came to uh, the total value of, of, of the donations came to $2,688.38. Mm. So I will entertain a motion to accept the donations from the May 2nd to November 4th, 2020 time frame. Gerilyn, I so move. I have a motion. This I, have is a Bernice, a second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion, questions? All right, hearing none, then we'll move on to the roll for voting. Margaret? Aye. Vince? Aye. Sue? Aye. Geraldine? Aye. Dave? Aye. Bernice? Aye. Carl? Aye. All right, motion passed. We'll move on to Resolution 2020-23, approving the use of $5,900 from the library budget for purchase of additional materials. At this time, the library's budget is 77.95% expended, and we are 
83.88% of the way through the fiscal year. The library is 5.93% or about $49,000 under budget. Unspent funds at the end of the year go into the library's fund balance, unreserved, undesignated, and can be used at the library board's and city council's discretion. Expenses are tracking, much as expected. Although there are a few categories for which we are under budget, most significantly special programming and travel conference and schools. This is largely due to the summer reading program and adult programming that was not able to take place in person this year and staff pursuing professional development that has been free and online due to current conferences and workshops being conducted in online forums. Because it is as expected that there will be unused funds, barring any unforeseen major expense, the library requests that $5,900 from the budget be directed toward the purchase of an online platform and additional materials for checkout. And it's broken down into $900 for the purchase of Creative Bug, an online arts and crafts workshops and techniques platform where patrons can learn how to paint knit, crochet, sew, screen print, and more. $3,000 going towards the purchase of items for the Library of Things, items that can be checked out by patrons and families for passive programming at home for the winter months when we do not anticipate in-house programming for children and youth adults to resume, and $2,000 towards the purchase of PlayAway launch pads, which are tablets that are preloaded with learning apps, videos, and games designed with a simple, easy to use interface that does not require any download time or need for Wi-Fi. And I'd like to point out that the there is also a quote attached from Creative Bug for the purchase of their uh, program and the $900 that we are looking at is for the three year term. So, I will entertain a motion to approve the use of $5,900 from the library budget for the purchase of additional materials. Vince, I just wanted to clarify. Yep. It's a three-year term and $900 each year. Right. Sorry. Correct. Thanks for doing that. Yeah. $900 per year for a three-year term. Um, if we only went with a one-year term, it would have been more expensive. Let's see what it, a 12 month subscription is $1,000. 24 month subscription is $950 billed annually, and the 36 month subscription is $900 billed annually. Mm -hmm. And if we do need to cancel for any reason after year one or two, we can without penalty. Okay, so we can cancel without penalty? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, well, thanks for all that clarification. So now, again, I will ask for a uh, motion to. Ex, uh, approve the use of $5,900 from the library budget to purchase these additional materials. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I will second. This is Sue. Okay. We have a couple seconds. And then uh, do we have any discussion? Questions? Yeah. Um, Paulina, right. the um, amount that you are, are ask, you're requesting and this motion is $5,900. Are you limited to a certain amount, or is that the entirety of that 49000 uh, that number that Vince uh, recited earlier, available for doing it, this it kind of thing? It could be. Um, I was just mostly focusing on, since we would use it for passive programming, I was um, looking at the special programming budget, which some of these items could come in, as well as travel, conference, and schools. As well, we are also underspent a little bit on our computer and tech um, right now. Mm -hmm. So I was just kind of putting into the line items that um, they would usually come out of, more or less. Well, I don't know if this is the yeah. area to, to discuss this, but if not, we can move on with the vote. But mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious if that sort of thing is open for us to be able to do if we deem it uh, appropriate. I, I'm just curious about the hot spa spots, how those things are being circulated, if there's um, a greater need or you're hearing more from uh, students um, uh, requesting uh, more access or, or more of those devices if that's something that we should contemplate. 
Okay. Um, right now, I don't know, April, do you know if they're all checked out? I know we, they did start um, going out more, um, but for the most part, we usually have one available, or we have had. So there's not a big need at the moment, at least from students. Um, and I think most students are, at least within um, the public school system, are in person still. So, um, but that's a good question. I could take a look at that. Since we, we, a while back, we offered holds on the hotspots, mm -hmm. and for a while we did consistently have holds on them. Um, but after we reopened, after we were closed for the pandemic for a while, the holds have not increased mm -hmm. like we expected right. at that point. There's and usually, I think, if there is a hold, there's usually like one or two. It's not um, very big. Okay. Well, that was we good. have advertised, so. Okay. But that is a good question, you know, then about uh, being able to utilize uh, available funding for other purposes that uh, uh, may be required based on the fact that, you know, we're in the unprecedented times and with the coronavirus and such. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, the, uh, dealing with the resolution that we have here. I don't ever remember talking about for this basically all come up due to the COVID. Yeah, so we were looking at different things that we could have um, to provide for our patrons um, that f for passive for programming that they can do at home. Okay, and you said uh, the licensing was for three years, so so that means that even if the COVID disappears, this can still be yes. used in the coming years then? Yes, it would be one of our online, one of the online services that we provide to patrons. Um, and w a couple of our um, crafting books have unfortunately um, ceased publication. I know at least one that um, will not be renewed uh, next year. So I think this is a nice supplement to target our um, crafters um, in an online forum if they are online. So I take it then you will monitor the use of it uh, so that uh, in a couple, two and a half years or so, if it's going well, you might decide to up it again? Right, yes, and um, and we could probably keep track. I don't know what it looks like um, from a back end, uh, probably a couple months in to see if we do see much use of it. Um, and the interesting part of the, about Creative Book, too, is we do have, they do all the, of the subscriptions provide performance, public performance rights. So we could also um, potentially in the future do um, uh, programming where we can show it, um, you know, in a group setting. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So similar to our movie licensing, but this would be more program. I don't know how that would work, but right. you know, we can do that. And then for the play away launch pads, then mm -hmm. that would be, would that be handled in terms of uh, reserving them and Yes. Making them that would be similar to any other, like the hotspots or the uh, books or whatever. Yep. And there's um, a lot of um, the ones we were looking at. There's a lot of learning apps and things like that for the younger set. We were looking at items to provide um, middle schools and younger. Okay. Now then, would those be under, you know, they got to be returned, you know, and then if, if there's a hold on them, that kind of thing? Uh, to keep them in, in the system so that they're, you know, not, not out there and yeah. in per, per, mm -hmm. per, 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 perpetuity. Right, yep. <laughs> okay. And then for that, then, would, would that be something we'd have to add uh, uh, onto the uh, fines and... and uh, yes, eventually, once we kind of get that going, we would have to add that in, yes. Okay. All right, any other questions? All right, hearing none, then we'll go through the uh, roll call for the, uh, the uh, approval of this resolution. Margaret? Aye. Vince? Aye. Sue? Aye. Geraldine? Aye. Dave? 
Aye. Bernice? Aye. Carl? Aye. All right. Motion passed. Now we'll move on to Resolution 2020-24, uh, excuse me, Approving Library of Things Policy and User Agreement. This is the first reading, so we will not be voting on this. Uh, the Library of Things is a collection of non-traditional library items that complement the New Elm Public Library's mission to share as a community a haven for learning, imagination, discovery. The purpose of the Library of Things is to provide diverse opportunities for learning and engagement and may include items like home and assistive devices, audio-visual equipment, science and technology, video and board games, musical instruments, sporting equipment, and learning toys. Due to the fact that these are non-traditional library items, a user agreement will be necessary for patrons to sign to enable checkout. The policy and user agreement are being reviewed by the city attorney and his suggestions will be incorporated into the documents. And we do have the uh, policy is included in this resolution. Then there's the original lending guidelines and agreement and then the reviewed lending guidelines and agreement. And that was the review from by the city. Yes, by the um, assistant city attorney. And he had um, no issues with the policy, no additions. Okay. So. Or comments. <laughs> All right. So this will be out there on the website and be available for review uh, for the next month. And then we'll, mm -hmm. we'll take it up next month and barring any changes. And it explains the, the policy, ex explains uh, things, and then there's the, uh, the agreement, which is uh, a person has to read through and agree with for when they s and sign it or prior to taking anything out. And then the, we'll move on to the last item, which is resolution 2020-25, accepting ALA's resilient Communities Grant. This is a, uh, in October 2020, the library was awarded an American Library Association Resilient Communities Libraries Respond to Climate Change Grant for $1,000 to be used for programming and documentaries for the library collection. The library was selected as one out of 25 libraries across the country. The grant runs from October through April and includes a designation as a community hub by crew, which is communities responding to extreme weather, involving staff training and receiving informational materials available to the public on emergency preparedness and weather emergencies in our area. The library will host a screening of one documentary provided by the grant with accompanying discussion and programs facilitated in collaboration with community partners in relation to weather emergency preparedness. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you want to maybe explain a little bit more about that, Paulina? Oh, sure. Um, so we don't have any dates um, coming up um, for this and our programming librarian is working with um, I know he's spoken with our emergency management um, director here in Brown County. Um, so they're formulating um, what kind of discussion to have. More than likely, I assume it will be virtual um, and kind of focusing on emergency preparedness. Okay, so I will entertain a motion then for accepting the ALA's Resilient Communities Grant in the form of $1,000. So move. I have a motion, do I have a second? I second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any other further discussion or questions? Just like to acknowledge and, and I've got a question. This is Gerilyn. Mm -hmm. um, who is our grant writer for this and the previous grant that was described? Um, for both of these, it was our programming librarian um, who wrote them. Or um, the, and the funds, um, the it's actually through our friends of the library, um, who oh. is our fiscal agent. So, but um, we did write them. Thank you. Yep. And thank the, the staff uh, and the volunteers who were involved in 
preparation of the application for the grant. Mm -hmm. Will do, thank you. So now, that brings up a question concerning grants. I mean, is there, are you constantly scouring the various sources for what grants are available or do they kind of come your way and say you know you have a, like a grant you're on a grant emailing list or how does how does that um, work i wish <laughs> <laughs> um a, a little bit of both sometimes we receive notice from um through traverse to sue um, um on um several different listservs i know our programming librarian assistant library director are, are on some and this year a little bit more i think um we're kind of focusing more just to see what's available out there, what we can do. Um, and we do have, um, I know our programming librarian told me there's um, one grant that I haven't heard of coming up um, with a de deadline in January. I also um, found another one, um, which I don't know if we'll be um, eligible for, but it might be beneficial from for Brown County as a whole. Um, so it kind of, a little bit of both. We kind of keep our eyes out there. Um, um, like for example, ACHF, that's um, f the Arts and um, Cultural Heritage Funds is through Traverse to Sue, and that's monies that um, the uh, TDS Library Co-op receives um, annually. I think they receive about 130000 a year, and it's just a formal application process. Um, and those funds are always available um, for libraries. Brown County as a whole, we receive about 13000 re receive, but th we have about $13,000 of those funds available to us every year. Um, that's how they're structured. So we usually, um, and that's split up between the five libraries in Brown County, um, so sometimes we co cooperate together on programs. Sometimes we kind of do our own thing. It just kind of depends. But yeah, we're, I think we're, um, I'm encouraging staff to look for more grant opportunities in the coming year. Good. All right, any other questions or issues? All right, hearing none, then we'll do the roll call for the vote on accepting the ALA's Resilient Communities Grant in the form of $1,000. Margaret? Yes. Vince? Aye. Sue? Aye. Geraldine? Aye. Dave? Aye. Bernice? Aye. Carl? Aye. All right. Motion passed. All right. We've worked our way through all the action items. Super job, everyone. Mm -hmm. Now the final item is the uh, other business, the expiring board terms. So I'll let uh, Paulina kind of explain okay. that. I just wanted to uh, make everyone aware that um, we do have three library board members whose terms um, are expiring at the end of the year. So next month, I believe, will be the last month um, of their terms for um, Vince, Sue, and Dave. Um, so we're, um, we do have um, some people who are interested in being on the board. Um, and so I do have a couple emails out um, to individuals, but um, these are board terms that um, the um, Vince, Sue and Dave cannot, it's the end of your second terms, I believe. So you have to be off per our bylaws for a year and then can come back for a third and final um, board term. Third. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's uh, more right. information. We can't, we can't re up. Right, we're at the end of our, our second yeah. consecutive term, mm -hmm. and then we have to sit out for a period of a year, mm -hmm. and then we can come back for a final third term after that. Mm -hmm. All righty. So then, uh, uh, yeah, so next month then will be the, our, our last uh, board meetings yep. for, for the near term. No. All right. Any other issues? I, Go ahead, Carl. I want to just ask Paulina. Uh, seems like a, a month or so ago we were talking about staffing and, and hiring a oh, couple yes. part time mm -hmm. slots. Uh, how are we doing with that? And did we get some folks on board? Um, we have not yet. Um, we have a posting right now. We reposted those positions as well as a third library aid position. We had another library gave, give notice. Um, she um, accepted a full time job um, here in town. So we were very excited for her, but sadly, to see her leave um, so that gave us an opportunity to reduce some of um, those schedules so we reposted unfortunately the um, individuals we um, 
we offered the positions to declined mm -hmm. at that time. Um, so we were posted again. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So uh, the posting does close on Sunday, um, Sunday at four o'clock central. <laughs> 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 I just checked it the other day. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, not midnight. <laughs> All right, any other business then? All right, hearing none, then uh, we'll consider this meeting adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank 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 you.